it doesn't work. If you're looking at problems, you're not looking at God. If you're looking at God, you're not looking at problems. If you're looking at people, you're not looking at God. If you're looking at God, you're not looking at people. You need to stay above, 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 above the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. That's why the Word of God says, gird up the loins of your mind. Even when you don't feel like you're doing it, you say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I'm not so pathetic as to live by feelings and emotions. Don't allow your feelings to lead you. Don't allow your emotions to lead you. Your emotions leading you, you'll be riding on a roller coaster. Sometimes you're high, sometimes you're low. Amen? You get manic depressive. What is manic depressive? When you're high, you're very high. When you're low, you're very low. Above only. Say with me, above only. Above only. Your power is not in your emotions. Your power is not in your will. Your power is not in your mind. Your power is in your spirit. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Mark chapter 16, 17 to 18. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. When you are sick, Put the hand on your body and say, sickness and disease, leave my body in Jesus' name. Amen. I do this all the time. Whenever I feel there's any pain in my legs, I lay my hands on my legs and I say, go devil, go. You're not allowed to put pressure on my nerves. Go in the name of Jesus. I put my hands on my kneecap and I say, be strengthened in Jesus' name. Be strengthened in Jesus' name. There's power in words. There's power in what you say. There's power. The power of God coming out of your mouth through your words imparted into your physical body. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's why, have you noticed that swearing is universal? There are swear words in English, swear words in Spanish, in French, in Chinese, swear words in the Tongan language, right? Any Tongans here? Are there swear words in your language? Yes. <laughs> any Samoans here? Samoans? Are there any swear words in your language? Why? Because swear words is the language of devils. Swear words is the language of demons. They curse. They speak destructively. Amen. And that's why the Word of God says what? What did Jesus say? He said, a new tongue. He said, in my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. 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 Amen. They shall take up serpents. Amen? Referring to devils. Amen? Even if they drink any deadly thing. Don't get into the fear of sickness and disease. Don't be afraid if I eat this, I'll get sick. That's where your faith is. Your faith is in the food you eat. You're afraid that if you eat wrong, you'll get sick. What is fear? Fear is faith turned around. Faith that is negative is fear. Faith that is turned negative is fear. You're afraid if you don't eat right, you get sick. That's where your faith is, and of course it will happen. What did I say just now? Above. Even if I eat any deadly thing, it shall not hurt me. Amen. What do I say this is? This is supernatural success. This is supernatural success. How do we get there? Let's go to Psalm 51 verse 5. Psalm 51 verse 5. How do we get there? We get there by knowing that in the natural we are rotten. We get there by looking into the fact that in the natural we are rotten. Nobody can help us. Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in sin, in iniquity, in sin did my mother conceive me. There is not even one person who can boast of himself, I'm a Greek saint. Everybody has problems. Everybody has troubles. In sin did my mother conceive me. 
You look at the inside, you look at what's on the inside of you, what do you find? You find pride. You find ego, what do you, what do you call it? Being self-centered. You find inferiority. You find insufficiency. You find selfishness. You find lust. Go with me to Romans chapter 5. How many of you would, would agree that Paul is a saint? How many of you would say that Paul is a powerful person? How many of you would say that the Apostle Paul is a powerful person? Lift up your hands. Yes. Okay, let's look at the words of Paul. Romans chapter 7, verse 18 to 24. Verse 18 to 24. Read with me. For I know, this is Paul speaking, for I know that in me, that is in my natural self, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do, I do not. But the evil that I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? The Apostle Paul is saying, I want so much to do good. I desire so much to do good. But how come the good that I want to do, I don't do? But the evil that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And I find myself fighting all the time within me. When I want to do good, then there's evil within me and pulling me away to do evil. Now, I know that some of you may be thinking, well, what do you mean, Pastor Dora? I never do evil. Well, let me ask you. Have you ever had times that you've doubted? I want so much to believe. I want so much to believe, but I don't understand why, but doubts come. I want so much to forgive, to forgive, but I don't understand why, but resentment comes. I want so much to do good. I want so much to serve. I don't understand why, but then I need to look at myself. I need to take care of myself. I need time to take care of myself. I want so much to give it all, to love, to give, to love, to give and to love. But then I need to consider my self-defense. What if he's making use of me and exploiting me? This is something that is very practical on a day-to-day -day basis. The natural self does not have the power to be holy. The natural person does not have the power to believe, does not have the power to do good, does not have the power to love unselfishly. Let's face it. And if you don't face it, you will never be promoted in glory. The number one thing that we all need to know, like David, he said, within me there is nothing good. We need to know this. In and of ourselves, there is nothing good. And because you know that in and of yourself is nothing good, that's why you don't want yourself. You want Jesus. We call this the spirit of repentance. You don't want the glory for yourself because you know that in and of yourself, you cannot handle the glory. You get into pride. And then pride puts you into shame. Look at the mighty man, Paul. Look at the mighty man, David. They all got into this revelation. It's the depth of the revelation. The depth of the revelation. In and of myself, there is nothing good. Absolute zero, zero, zero. He did not say, in and of myself, there is a little bit of good. You know how, get, how some people get offended? You think that I'm so bad? I'm not that bad. It's okay. I'll tell you, yeah, in and of myself, I can be very, very bad. If you want me to tell you, yes, I can be very, very bad. There were times I got so angry I wanted to slap you. <laughs> the key is being very honest with yourself. And don't try to defend yourself. Be very honest. Be very honest. 
Amen. And when you're honest, then that brokenness come. The brokenness come. You don't defend your weakness anymore. You give God your weakness. Yes, Lord, I have all this weakness. Come on, take, 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 take all of me. Can we say amen? Amen. The extent that you empty yourself is the extent to which you can be filled with the glory of God. The extent to which you empty yourself is the extent to which God can fill you, fill you, fill you, fill you with himself. Do you get this? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Hallelujah. We have seen a lot of evil in these end times. We have seen like teenagers going into a school and just shot everybody, killed everybody in the school. Amen? We have seen robberies that, that's like ridiculous and, and, and so gruesome and, and so grotesque. The Word of God says, David said that if he was left to himself, he could be like a beast. How many of you have ever killed somebody? Lift up your hands. I won't report you to the police. <laughs> How many of you here have ever killed somebody? David killed or murdered somebody. He was lusting after Bathsheba. He lusted after her. He was possessive. He wanted her. He lusted after her, took her to himself, and then what happened? He arranged for her husband to be murdered. The very David, he said, there is nothing good in me. The very David who said that I was like a beast until I enter into the sanctuary. The very David that God said, he is a man after my own heart. If you always defend your goodness, you will not be able to see the glory of God. If you are so great, you are so, mar so smart, you are so good, you will never see the glory of God. Revelation comes to those that are broken. The Bible says, a broken and a contrite heart he will not despise. You understand that life has many battles and challenges. Life has things that will break you. There are experiences in life that will break your pride. There are experiences in life that will break your self-worth. Why? To show you that you need God. To show you that you need God to love people. You need God to walk in success. You need God to say no to the devil. You need God in every area of your life. So that your dependence is not on yourself, not on your education, not on your self-will, but your dependence is on God. Because when you know that your dependence is on Him, then what happened? Grace would be released. Say with me, grace. Grace. The Bible says, God says that He will give grace to the humble. Grace is given to the humble. I said just now, the more you empty yourself, the more God fills you up. So don't get mad or get frustrated with yourself when you can't do something. When you can't do something, lift up your hands and say, Lord, I know I can't do it, but you can. So I'm exalting that you can. I'm exalting that God can. I'm, I'm exalting that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Let me ask you, if God was standing here, let me ask you, whom will he bless? The one who says, I can do it all. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Or the one who says, God, do it through me. God, do it through me. Whom will he bless? Come on, you tell me. Whom will he bless? The one who says, God, do it through me. Amen. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Who is the God of this world? Somebody tell me. Who is the God of this world? Thank you. 
Who is the God of this world? Louder. Satan, the devil. The devil has blinded the eyes of those who do not believe. A captive cannot free himself. A captive cannot free himself. That's why we that are of this world, we cannot free ourselves. We need Jesus. We need Jesus who comes from heaven. We need Jesus who comes from heaven to save us, to deliver us. You need the forces of heaven, the forces of heaven to live a victorious and a winning life. Can we say amen? You cannot produce in and of yourself. You need the forces of heaven. You need the power of God in your spirit. The power of God, amen, in your spirit to deliver you from captivity. Amen. The power of God to deliver you from captivity to sickness and disease. Capti captivity to inferiority. Captivity to, to uh, constant failures in your life. If you find... In your life, there is a pattern of continual defeat. If you find that in your life, somehow, I don't understand why, but I work hard, but it seems that I can never rise to the top. If you find that there is a pattern in your life, that it seems like from generation to generation, you're always poor. Always poor. You can't get out of poverty. It can be one generation is better, and then the next generation, zoom, go down again. If there's a pattern of defeat, a pattern of failure, or if there's a pattern of sickness and disease, like heart, heart attack, five generations die of heart attack. If you find that there is a pattern of sickness and defeat and failure in your life, you need to shake it off. You need to shake it off. One generation should be better than the next one generation should be better than the next. Your children should be walking in prosperity and not poverty anymore. One generation should be better than the next. Your children should not be walking in sickness anymore. If there is a continual pattern of divorce in your family, your mother is divorced, your great-grandmother is divorced, your grandfather is divorced, your great-grandfather is divorced. You need to break it. You need to break that generational curse, the forces of demons over your life. If there's a pattern of barrenness, a pattern of barrenness, you can't conceive. Your mother could not conceive. Your great-grandmother could not conceive. You need to break it. If there's a pattern of depression, I suffer from that. A continual pattern of depression. You got sick. You got moody. You got sad without knowing why. A pattern of alcoholism. You are addicted to alcohol and your children. And your parents are also alcoholic. And a, a, a generation of witchcraft. What I mean is like you live in the La La Land. You're, you were a witch, and you believed in all those witchcraft and operating under the power of devils and doing witchcraft. And the children after you, they're also living in this la-la land. You know, you know the song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? <laughs> That's the la-la land <laughs> of drug addicts. You need to break it in the name of Jesus. Can we say amen? Amen. Every eye closed, every eye closed. Come on. And you know and you know that you have a problem right now. Lift up your hands. We're going to break it in the name of Jesus. Lift up your heart. We break that pattern. Break that pattern of demonic oppression. Break that pattern of demonic oppression over you right now. Break the curses of the devil over you. Break the generational curses of demon over you right now. The generational demons of poverty, of sickness, of addiction, of witchcraft. Break his power over you right now. The demons of, of Jezebel. 
the vanity of the world, the control of the world. Break his power over you right now in the name of Jesus. Generation and after generation of servitude to money. Generation after generation of servitude to money. Break his power over you right now. Break his power over you. And I declare freedom in Christ Jesus. Declare freedom in Christ Jesus. Freedom in Christ Jesus. You're free to be free to be healthy. Free to be strong. Free to be mentally sound. Free to be emotionally joyful. Free to be strong in your will, in the will of the Father. Free to be rich and wealthy. Free to be joyful. Free to be wise and clever. Free in the name of Jesus. Free from all oppression and depression. Free from captivity to demons. In the precious name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to finish with this. Mark chapter 1 verse 8. Mark chapter 1 verse 8. I want to finish with the revelation that Jesus is giving us. Actually, I will take my time and start with Mark chapter 1 verse 4. Okay, Mark chapter 1 verse 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Repentance is very important for the remission of sins. Repentance means what I said just now. Take, 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 take all the bad. Take it out from me. I don't want it anymore. And I turn full on to God. Repentance is a turning around, away from the bad to the good, for the remission of sins. Then sin is broken. The power of sin over your life will be broken. That's the first baptism, the baptism of repentance. And continue to read. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem, and they were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. But that is not enough. How many of you know Christians that are very good and live their whole life in defeat? I know some. How many of you know Christians that are very good and they die of cancer? They die of terminal sickness or die of accidents. Do you know some? Yes or no? Yes. So just being good, just being repentant is not good enough. What else do you need? Look at this. And they of Jerusalem, they were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Look at verse 8. Mark chapter 1, verse 8. This is John speaking. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Just repentance is not enough. You need to go all the way for the baptism of power. The baptism of power. You need the baptism of power. You need the personal guidance of the Holy Spirit. You need an open, an open heaven above your head. Darkness can no longer linger above you. You know how some people, they carry darkness with them all the time? They're always sad, always negative, always have a poverty mentality. Gloom and doom is over the head all the time. That's not what God wants for you. God wants you to have an open heaven. Amen. The glory of heaven, the light of heaven to shine all over you. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. How many of you, how many of you have ever seen a performance on stage and they have what they call spotlight? And the spotlight shine on that person from up there. And the whole person, that whole world is lit up in spite of all that is around him. It's dark. That's what I mean. It can be raining dogs and cats outside, but your world is glorious. We call it divine separation. Divine separation. Even though there is darkness in Egypt, there is light in Goshen. Even though there is sickness out there in the world, in you is divine health. Can we say amen? 
Yes, come on, give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. You are not nobody. You are somebody. You are somebody. You're marked for glory. You're marked for success. You're marked for separation. You have to go full on with God. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot afford to only have the river of life at your ankle deep. Even if, you have, if you're up to your ankle with the anointing, the devil can still defeat you. You cannot afford to be just ankle deep with the anointing. You cannot afford to be just knee deep with the anointing. Even if you have got anointing to your knee, the devil can still push you down. Even up to your loin is better. Yes, you have, you have the anointing up to your loin. You are committed all the way to your loin, to your waist. But the devil can still punch you in the face. You need to be full on. Completely immersed in the anointing. Completely immersed in the word of God. Completely immersed in healing. Completely immersed in provision. Completely immersed in the love of God. Completely immersed in the miraculous power of God. Hallelujah. All the way and the anointing will carry you and you swim in it. Praise God. How many of you remember Jesus asked Peter, a professional fisherman, Peter said, I've toiled all night. I've, I've struggled so hard. I've worked so hard. I've done all that I could. And now, Jesus, you came into my boat, and you, not even a fisherman, is telling me what to do. And then he made a decision. How many of you, like, sometimes you don't like to be told, Pastor Dora, don't tell me what to do. You are not in my position. But I have to tell you what to do by the power of the Holy Ghost. Peter made one wise decision that forever changed his life. He said, at your word, I will go out to the deep and let down my net for a catch. He said, at your word, I will go. At your word. If you would just put yourself in the word of God and cherish the word of God, I guarantee you, your life will succeed. Jesus asked him to go to the deep. You cannot catch big fish in shallow water. You cannot catch big fish in shallow water. You cannot get gold in shallow soil. You cannot grow big trees in shallow soil. Jesus said, go to the deep. Go all the way at my word and let down your net for a catch. And what happened? All the fish came to his net. There was so much fish. Abundance, wealth, prosperity came to him. Go deep with God. Go deep with him. All the way. Don't be a shallow Christian. Don't be a shallow Christian. Go deep all the way with him. Deep all the way with him. I want to show you one more thing. In the Old Testament, you know there's the tabernacle. And when they, when they entered in to worship God, to give their offering, they first got into the outer court, right? And then the holy place, and then the holy of holies. Let me ask you, where can you find the manna in the pot of gold? Where can you find it? The manna that is in the pot of gold. Where do you find it? In the Holy of Holies. Let me ask you, where can you find the rod of Aaron that budded, that still got live in it? It's budding. It's still got live. Where can you find that rod? The rod that divided the Red Sea. Where can you find it? In the Holy of Holies. Where can you find the covenant that God swears that he will protect you? That God swears that he will prosper you? That God swears that he will heal you? Where can you find it? In the Holy of Holies. You have to go all the way from the outer court to the holy place into the Holy of Holies. That's where you will find the manna in the golden pot. That's where you will find the rod that buds. That's where you will find the covenant of your God. All the way, all the way, go deep, all the way.
Be a full-on, committed Christian. Start digging in the Word. Do a systematic study of the Word of God. Discipline yourself in prayer, in times of devotion, in times of worship. Don't think that it's God who is not helping you. Amen. You need to tune in to God's frequency. Deep calleth unto deep. Deep does not call unto shallow. Sometimes I talk to people and I, I hear them and I say, I know that they are very shallow, so I stop talking. You don't cast your pearls before the swine. Deep calleth unto deep. The depth of God calling the depth of you. There is a price that you have to pay. It's not the price of sickness and disease. It's not the price of poverty. It's the price of putting God first. It's the price of putting God first. When you wake up in the morning, you go to God first. Before you go to bed, you go to God first. Before you answer your problems, go to God first. Before you quickly do it, go to God first. God above your intellect, above your emotions, above your willpower, above all the challenges and problems, above all the, all the fun and the joy of the world. Why? Because when you have him, victory comes easy. When you have God, victory comes easy. It will not be hard. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Thank you, Jesus.